Doc, I've got a very sick hole on my hands. Can you come and see it right away? You told me I should have come to see you when my other cow was sick. It died so suddenly. Before you could see it, looks like tick fever, got it? Well, it might have been tick fever. But remember, I sent the head of that animal to the lab for tests. No results have come back yet. Can you come now, Doc? Tick fever or not, I need help. Well, okay, let's go. Back at the laboratory, the stained slides show the presence of negri bodies in the brain cells of the cow, but none in the brain cells of the pup. The scientific assistant has to inform the microbiologist, who reports these facts to Dr. Casabon. Dr. Casabon immediately calls, by radio, the technical officer, Animal Health in Port of Spain, to inform him of the case of paralytic rabies in the dead cow. He also tries to contact the district veterinarian at his office, but Dr. Campbell is on his way to the farm. He then tries to contact him on his car radio, but Dr. Campbell is examining the sick animal. stained slides, other tests for rabies are done in the laboratory. Using the other half of the brain, small transverse sections are cut and placed in a sterile mortar. is used to grind these sections into a paste. The suspension so formed is then inoculated into the brains of a litter of mice. The mice are acquired from a mouse colony kept in a special room. Apparently healthy mice, up to five weeks old, are selected. From each suspension, made from the brains of the pup and of the cow, six mice are inoculated. These are now placed in a separate room where they are observed for 28 days. If the rabies virus is present, the mice will develop signs of rabies and die within 5 to 28 days. In the case of the dead pup, the mice show no reactions to the inoculum.
case of the dead cow, all six inoculated mice developed paralytic rabies signs and die within a few days. Another means of testing for the presence of the disease is by the fluorescent antibody test. In addition to this, brain sections of the diseased animal are put on slides which go through a series of stainings and then are directly examined for the presence of negri bodies. This is not tick fever at all. It's much more serious than that. It looks like rabies to me. Does that mean I'm going to lose this animal also? Well, I'm afraid so. This cow is going to die and there is nothing I can do for it. What you just saw there are all the classical symptoms of rabies. Excessive salivation, droopy eyelids, lack of coordination. And finally, proof that the animal was bitten by bats. Um, did this animal stop eating in the last day or so? Yes, Doc. It appears it could not swallow anything. That's another symptom of the disease. This animal must not be removed or handled from now on. When it dies, you must inform me immediately. The head will have to be taken to the vet lab for examination. Now, Dr. Caesar is at present vaccinating cattle in this area. Now I'll get him to vaccinate all your animals needing attention. From what I see, it's very likely that your first cow, which died before I could examine it, also died from rabies. The vet lab should have the report ready by now. Well, I'm sorry for you, but you must take steps now to protect your other animals. I shall have to report this case immediately to head office. Dr. Kazabo, I have just examined an animal and it shows all the classical symptoms of rabies. It comes from the same farm as the one that died. Over. We will try to reach you to let you know that the first tests on the brain of that cow were positive for rabies. We'll keep in touch with you. Good morning. May I speak to the Director of Veterinary Public Health, please? Dr. Butcher speaking. Hello. Good morning, Dr. Butcher. How are you today? Fine, thank you. We have got two cases of paralytic rabies in cows at the Hossein's farm in Wallafield. You did say the Hossein farm at Wallafield? Yes. Very well. I'll visit later today. Thank you, Dr. Butcher. Mrs. Thompson, please come in. You called for me, Dr. Moore? Yes, please take this short press release. The public is hereby notified of an outbreak of rabies occurring in cattle in the Wallafield area. Clinical symptoms of the disease are excessive drooling of saliva, droopy eyelids, inability to eat or swallow, fear for water, 
incoordination followed by complete paralysis and death. Farmers should report all cases showing the above mentioned clinical symptoms to the nearest agricultural office. From tomorrow morning, the Ministry of Agriculture, Lands and Fisheries will be carrying out a vaccination program at all farms in the area. Your cooperation in this exercise is required. Well, you know, it was only a matter of time. The animal, of course, must not be removed from the farm, but it will have to be buried here. Dr. Campbell will remove its head, which will be sent to the vet lab for testing. I'm sorry this had to happen. Oh, here comes Dr. Butcher now. Dr. Butcher, I'd like you to meet Mr. Hussain. He is the owner of this farm. How do you do? Fine, thank you, sir. Dr. Butcher is Director of Veterinary Public Health, and he is here to ensure that the disease does not spread to farm employees. Mr. Hussain, are there any employees who came into contact with the animal? Yes, one. He was looking after the animal all the time. Well, he must be sent to the County Medical Office of Health for post-exposure treatment. Will you see that he gets there today? Yes, I'll take him myself. afternoon falls at the farm, the anti-rabies unit erects mist nets for trapping the vampire bats. wait for nightfall.
On the bodies of four of the trapped bats, an anticoagulant paste is applied, and these bats are released to return to their roosts. When they return, several bats ingest the poison when they groom the painted bats. In this way, painting one bat can result in poisoning as many as 20 to 30 other vampires. Several of the trapped bats are selected for further investigation. In the laboratory, they are identified and measured by the zoologist, Mr. Mirodali, adding to the store of knowledge about these vectors. Much like Pewan did, the microbiologist examines their brain cells for the presence of Negri bodies, a sure sign that they are carriers of rabies. The next day, the anti-rabies unit searches the forest near the farm in an effort to locate the bat roosts. Then note the location of the cave for later destruction of the bat. In another location, 
they inspect a known tree roost of vampire bats as part of their constant surveillance of forested and other areas. Permanent Secretary of the Ministry, Dr. Patrick Allen. You've seen the work of important departments of this ministry and their coordination in preventing and controlling the dreaded disease of rabies in Trinidad and Tobago. Over the past five years, the Animal Health Division has seen and confirmed an average of two to ten cases per year of bat transmitted rabies in cattle out of a total population of approximately 30,000 head. This speaks well of the efforts by this ministry. <coughs> Trinidad and Tobago has been fortunate in not having a case of rabies recorded in human beings since 1937, following the serious outbreaks of 1925 to 1931. And the last case of dog transmitted rabies to a human being was in 1912. With rapid air transport, Trinidad and Tobago has had to impose importation restrictions with a six month quarantine on dogs and cats coming from countries where rabies is known to exist. For example, the whole of North America, most of Europe and several South American countries. The risk of introducing rabies here by an imported dog or cat from these countries is highly probable. And indeed we may eventually have an explosive situation because of our large stray dog population. As you may know, the rabies virus affects the central nervous system and there is no known cure. It causes paralysis and convulsions and is invariably fatal. Let me give you the medical history of a rabies victim. The year 1929. A boy was carried to the Superior Health Center on the 16th of July, suffering from severe abdominal pains and pains in his right leg. He was feverish. The doctor advised that he be taken to hospital, but the parents refused. At home the very next day, a flaccid paralysis had spread to his left lower extremity and his bladder was greatly distended. His mind, though, was perfectly clear. On the 18th, he was sitting up in bed with his legs outstretched, unable to move them. His breathing was slightly labored and he was sweating profusely. Abdomen was distended and he complained of difficulty in swallowing. On the 19th, there was marked semi-paralysis of his upper extremities. He was unable to swallow, his tongue heavy, speech slow and indistinct, salivation profuse. He was perspiring freely. He was drowsy, but his mind was clear. At 4 a.m. the next day, he died. You can all understand, therefore, why we appeal to all persons in Trinidad and Tobago and to those who visit us to observe the country's importation regulations and ensure that any animal entering the country is doing so in accordance with our health requirements. It is senseless to indulge in contraband activities and to smuggle in your pet or any other animal into the country, to endanger your own health, the health of your loved ones, or the health of the community at large. As a responsible citizen or friend, please help to keep Trinidad and Tobago free from rabies. And now for the end of our story. Quarantine period of six months is over for the Fosters and their Doberman. The clerk must be satisfied that they have paid their quarantine fees before the dog can be released.
It would be good to see Dr. Paul before we leave. He is in. I will call him for you. Mr. and Mrs. Foster? That's exactly what you said to us six months ago when we brought our dog into the country. I want to thank you and the people here at Quarantine for all the care given to our animal over the last six months. Well, that's very nice of you. And I hope you realize now why the quarantine period was necessary. All I know is that it helps to prevent and control the incidence of rabies in the country. Is that right, Dr. Paul? Yes. That's right, Mrs. Foster. That's right. <laughs>